Thank you, everyone, for coming out today. What, what a beautiful day in the Panhandle. We uh, really, really glad to be here today, and we're going to talk about a project that we've uh, been working on for a little bit now. Uh, Senator Blair brought the, uh, some of the issues on Route 9 to my attention a few months ago, and uh, we, we immediately started looking those issues over and started doing what we do in the Department of Transportation, which is solve the problems. So under the leadership of our great governor, we, we really got after it. We, uh, we got up here and got our, got our some mapping done. We're, we're, we're kind of ahead here. So that's, that's not, too, uh, not to put too fine a point on it, but we're, 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 we're a long ways down the road getting some of the solutions here. Uh, it's a growing area. You know, we've got, uh, got a lot of some, some inefficiencies in the way traffic moves through the area on Route 9, and we want to address some of those things. So we're looking at about 10 to 15 miles, some in operational improvements. And uh, we, we've got some experience, and we, I call this a practical engineering approach to, to dealing with these kind of problems. And we, have, we do have some experience doing these kind of projects. One of the first Roads to Prosperity projects that we did was uh, down in southern West Virginia on West Virginia 10. That was a 70-mile project, had 16 bridges on it, and we, uh, we dealt with those uh, in record time and brought it in under budget, and that was one of the first completed Roads to Prosperity projects. When, uh, when, when the governor, governor helped us get, get that program up and going, so I uh, I really wanted to express to everyone my gratitude for the leadership of Senator Blair and always to our governor who gives us directions and if we go that direction things work out. They, they really work out well. So we're going to, uh, I'm, it's my great honor to introduce to you today the 36th governor of the state of West Virginia. Thank you, Governor Jim Justice. You know, I don't ever read, but I've got to read this right here, okay? First of all, and you know me, I don't blow smoke at anybody. You know, we've got delegates here, we've got senators here, we've got our Senate president here, we've got our speaker pro temp here, you know, we've got, we've got really a lot of really important folks that make are making things happen in Berkeley County all over the place and in the Eastern Panhandle everywhere. There's a real problem right out there, isn't there? There's a big time problem and it's a big time inconvenience and everything and why why is that? Well what's happened is, you know, your goodness has overcome you in a lot of ways. You know, I've, I've said this over and over and over, and I'm right about this. You know, while it's great, all the growth and the new schools and all the goodness that we have happening in the Eastern Panhandle, we still cherish our life and the way we live, and we want to maintain that. So, here's what happened, and this is the net net of the whole thing. You know, Senator Blair had come to Jimmy. Now Jimmy, you know, in all honesty, is head of our whole Department of Transportation. And what a job I think he does. I mean, he's an amazing engineer and he makes it happen. So then, Senator Blair comes to me and says, we got a real problem, real, real problem. Now the thing, and I want everybody to get this loud and clear, this man doesn't come to me with every little problem and every little thing in his area nonstop and everything, you know, like a lot of people may do. He comes to me when you've got a real need and a real problem, and he sees it as a real opportunity. Now, I'm telling you, you know, in all honesty, he does a heck of a job, and he is a great, great, great asset to the state of West Virginia. Now, there's times we don't agree on stuff, so what? I mean, at the end of the day, we keep plowing ahead as professionals, and absolutely, I can tell you, till I go to my grave, that he absolutely stands for you like you can't imagine. This project would not even be on the board if he hadn't come to me and said, we got a real problem. Because I know when he says, we got a real problem, we need to listen. Now, 
With all that being said, now I'm going to read my one little thing. And that's this right here. You know, they hand me these talking points and this stuff from time to time. But this is really profound. Because you know that that road right out there used to not be a problem. And now it's a problem all over the place for all kinds of you. And so this says, today, I am announcing that our Department of Transportation not is thinking about it, but is ready to start making life easier for those who drive Route 9. After months of analyzing this stretch, our Department of Transportation is not, not thinking about it, but is ready to implement a strategic 15-point improvement project that will alleviate congestion along several sections of Route 9. So you need to clap, you need to do all kinds of things. I thank our great Senate President and all y'all, our delegates and Paul and Jimmy and everybody, but I'm going to turn it over to our Senate President and uh, because this is his home. Absolutely, he wants goodness right here. We always want goodness in our home and everything. And uh, so, Senate, Senate President, take over, sir. Thank you. Thank you, yes, Governor. Yes, sir. So, I'm gonna, I got to paint a picture here for everybody. Roads to Prosperity. This is the Governor's idea. The voters voted for it and has paid dividends throughout the state. And you can see the changes that have taken place over the years. Now, to the legislature, we transferred record numbers of tax dollars from the general revenue, 100 million, 130 million, 150 million, and another 150 million into the road fund. That first 100 million dollars was, you can add up all the years from 1863 to, what was it, 2019? Uh, to 2019, and it doesn't make 100 million dollars. That was the commitment that we had for the roads in the state of West Virginia with the governor's leadership, with Jimmy's leadership, to being able to get us there to do that. This weekend, Governor, there's a roundabout on Rockcliffe Drive and Tavern Road that just opened up. It's not finished, but you can actually drive around it. It has alleviated a backup that could go for a half a mile in the evening or for the traffic congestion. It worked fantastic. People say that we may not get enough money here in the Eastern Panhandle. That's just not true. You can look at Inwood and roundabout after roundabout, and the traffic congestions like we have out here on 9 West was taking place on Route 11 and Route 51. They have been alleviated now because of the good work of the Department of Highways and you as governor. Okay, good. So now the, I had to paint that picture in the past to be able to. My only regret today is that we're not out here either at 8 o'clock in the morning or at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the afternoon where we'd be able to sit here and watch this traffic back up. And so we can't get enough roundabouts, to be quite honest with you, uh, when it comes to dealing with this because it keeps the traffic moving. But the investment and the speed, and this is, I, I got to throw my arm around Jim for a second here. And, and that is, it used to be that when the roads got fixed, they did what was called throw and go. I was in Morgantown, what was it, a year ago? Uh -huh. And I went over a patch where they were walking the road to fix the pothole, and they were throwing and going it. And it was terrible. And I called, called him up, he took my call. This is the way we worked together. He took my call, and when I rode back through two days later, it was fixed the right way, where they cut and sealed it in and washed it out. And that's the expectation that everybody's had where we, when we go to fixing the roads, it's more than just putting asphalt down. It's doing the ditching, doing all the control. You've done an absolutely great job under the governor's leadership to be able to get that done. That, ladies and gentlemen, i got to add one more thing. Uh, we were together one night, and I got to talk to him, and I said, when we get these new dump trucks in and new snow plows and all that, don't be painting those things white like that. I said, let's get them to work. Let's get them to work right away. And what did we allocate? $50 million for that. Uh, I said, let's get them to work right away. 
He did. So we were together, what, a month ago? And I said, well, we're saving a million dollars a year. How much more are we saving? Uh oh The savings aren't even calculable at this point. It, he told me it was right around $3 million that three, night. Three, three, three and a half million dollars. That can go to projects out here. That will pay for a roundabout. That will take care of business on that. So it's about getting the work done. It's about stepping forward and getting things right. It's about stepping forward and taking from the cloverleaf on the interstate and getting us all the way into Back Creek Valley. More growth will come, being able to manage it. And to, so, Governor, thank you for your leadership for not just the road, this road here today, but for the entire state. You can't go anywhere and not see bridges being worked on, asphalt being put down, and roads repaired the right way. And Jimmy, you get a tremendous amount of credit because you're the boots on the ground guy that gets it done. And there's not a better way to say thank you than to tell the people that are getting it done, thank you. So thank you very much. And thank you to our Senate President because this is a real problem and absolutely with all in us. Now just let's again be really fair. If we're wanting to recruit more and more and more folks here, and you know, and all of a sudden they're sitting in traffic all day long, you know, and they can't get to their houses or whatever it may be, I mean, are they going to come? Are they really going to come? Or if we have a situation to where, you know, school and all the congestion of the school and we can't get the students out and everything, and lo and behold, you have an accident, and God forbid, you know, are they going to come? I mean, do you not see we have got to absolute market ourselves all the time? And absolutely, in this one, without any question in the world, and you can put a stake in the sand that Jim Justice doesn't do anything except tell the truth. Now, I'll make plenty of mistakes, but I will tell you the truth. This would never, ever, ever have been a reality for us to be here today if it weren't for this man right here. So please give him a great big round of applause because he deserves it. And, and President, thank you, sir. That's all I've got. We done?